All righty, so we're gonna wait for some guys to jump on. While we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and ask everybody how they're doing. How are you doing tonight, Paul? Doing good, good to be here. That's awesome. And Josh, how are you doing? Doing good, I was up late last night cleaning a bowling alley, but Ooh. I'm covering and doing good. That's Did awesome. You strike out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, nephew. Uh, wanted to play, wanted to bowl. He's 12 years old. I'm trying to teach him how to work, but he was uh, eyeing the arcade that was in the back, a brand new arcade they added. And I only cleaned it like before COVID. So finally, after three years, they built that arcade after I, so it's been three years since I've cleaned the place. It's but, not yeah, a real awesome. arcade unless it has Galaga. <laughs> no such, that's right. So Kevin, Sleeveless Wonder, how are you doing tonight? I am doing spectacular as always. Thank you for asking, that, Tim. That is awesome. Without any further ado, let's get this ball a rolling. So, guys, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight for the Teacher's Lounge. We're going to get this thing going right away. But first, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. As you get this knowledge, please share it with others. Give to others as you're given to, and you'll have a great life. Remember to thank those that are out there helping you each and every day, and to give honor and respect to those that are serving us. Serve others so that you can be served. It's a great way of living. So without further ado, Aaron, will you fire up that first, what would you do? All right, so this is tattoo paint is what they said, but tattoo ink. Um, any recommended chemicals? Um, so we all know how this, how to start this. It's to the test, 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 test. But I did some research on Tattoo Inc. And I'm curious, um, what would you do, Paul, to treat Tattoo Inc.? Well, well, that's the point. A lot of times when we get a stain, we don't get any information. They just say it's a red stain or a blue stain. Um, in this one, they're saying it's tattoo ink or tattoo color. But we still don't really know what it is because um, sometimes you, people use the wrong words. Uh, so um, we really got to test uh, to see what it is and see what the reactions are. So testing is kind of the key. I love it when I can get a stain out that everybody wants to walk away from or turn down. There was a lot of comments about that, walking away from this, or mm -hmm. it's a lost cause. But a lot of times things work almost like magic, miraculously, if you use the right product. So uh, many years ago, just to make this quick, I went and bought all the markers I could think of and find, and I did a whole bunch of rugs and I tested to, because my goal was to discover the best ink remover, the best marker remover. What I come to find out was uh, solvents that worked on one or two of them amazingly well didn't phase other brands of marker and vice versa. So then you realize even if you know what it is, it's a magic marker, there's still some solvents that work better than others depending on what the marker is so testing is the key you need to keep on working until you find out what the answer is right and i, I totally agree and from my research on tattooing boy they put a lot of stuff in that stuff just saying there's a lot of stuff in there um a lot of time there's iron in it and so sometimes you'll have to use a solvent and a something that can remove iron like a rust remover because it's non-oxidized and it's covered in a filmic form of a, a carbon like a fluorocarbon even to keep it black so you want to be you want to really do your you really want to make an effort to remove it but you also want to use proper methodology um i see that thomas joined us tonight i know exactly how he's going to handle um this spot but i want to hear what he's going to do as far as procedure on removing this bad of a dye stain. Um, what would you do, Thomas? Well, first thing I'd probably do is, if I could, find the manufacturer of the ink 
and uh, talk to them. I mean, a lot of times there are so many different inks. Like some of my ink came from England. The colors mm -hmm. are actually imported in the inks, and they make tattoo ink differently there than they do here. Uh, one of the people that we go and uh, one of the servers where we eat a lot, my wife and I is from England, and they they do a lot difference in the way of tattoo. So if you can find the manufacturer and talk to them, that's always good. As far as what I would do individually, I would look for the smallest spot and begin my testing procedures. Now, because it's an ink, there are water-based and solvent-based inks. For most of these, it's probably going to be a solvent base. We usually try to try to start on the dry side. So I might take a little bit of volatile solvent on a Q-tip as a start for my test to see what type of transfer. And before I do that, let me pre-qualify. Anytime I'm going to touch any ink that I'm afraid of it running, I'm going to wring it with water or sometimes I use stain magic, but I will draw an inch to two inch ring around it to fill the pores of the fiber around it so that when I'm addressing it, it doesn't spread out and become a nightmare. You know how many times in my life I've seen people start with a pencil eraser and end up with a half a dollar size purple discoloration trying to get the inks out. So, and what Paul said when I came in was he was saying test, test and test. And that's the exact answer, test and see what works. And once you find what's moving it pretty well, you can go as far as uh, depending on what you find moves it, whether it's a water, a solvent, or whatever, there's a lot of different ways. I know that Paul has a solvent gun that he likes. And I don't like using solvent guns on uh, latex, you know, bonded carpet, you know, tufted carpet like that. But I wouldn't be opposed to, in some situations, either using that or if it's a water base, you know, flushing through to a water claw or a spotting spatula and bringing it up that way. Just depends on what it responds to, and that's going to determine what chemical and what processes you use. Yeah, that, that's a terrific answer. I'm shocked you wouldn't put down a towel and use a tamping brush. But, Paul. Uh, just to address what Thomas said, excellent comments there. And putting that ring around or wetting out the fibers around, that is key. And I didn't mm -hmm. mention I'm glad you brought it up. Um, but with a solvent gun, uh, you don't want to shoot it into the latex. It'll, right. it'll dissolve the latex, but you can do a gun and cuff method. Yes, the shearing method. Yes, the shearing method. And you just hit the face fibers by putting the gun all, not quite, but near parallel with the carpet surface and then a vacuum cuff on the other side or vacuum tool. And you just, you just hydroplane your solvent uh, through the pile and then you can get away with using a solvent gun just a little trick that's an awesome trick thanks for sharing that paul so um uh josh or kevin do you have anything you would like to share maybe just blast it in deeper into the carpet with the good old technique that you've seen from youtube with the hydro force yeah sure why not just yeah soak it down now I, I would get paul and, and thomas covered it that exactly this steps that yeah. i would take I think Josh is in the same boat. I think we would all agree on that. So we need to move on to the next what would you do? I was hoping that somebody would say tamping brush. So Christian has a really – oh, thank That's you. That's only if you get into water-based inks, Tim. I know. Well, we have something – you can use your tamping brush. So now we're dealing with molasses. Now molasses, we all know how big of a pain in the butt sugars can be. And keep in mind – you know, tonight's theme is money-making opportunities. Um, so if you can be the guy that doesn't have spots come back, that would be great. He asked if he could use Silver Solution. He says it is an organic spot, which it is. Um, I'm curious. I would personally, the way I would treat this, I'm just going to start out. I would actually put down Kevin's Magic Water to start out before I do anything else. I would want to break down those sugars with just hot water. Just Start somewhere. Start somewhere. Get myself a base. Before I apply any cleaner, try to strip out some of that sugar myself. Or is my methodology wrong? Um, Paul, Kevin, or would somebody else like to change if they want to disagree with my methodology by starting out with well, water? I'm rinse. certainly not going to disagree with the magic water. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I mean, that's, I would do that. I want to get as much of it out as possible. Now, he says it's in the pad, so you can only get so much 
So unless you're willing to disengage the carpet, which it kind of looks like it's in the spot, you could do that. It, mm -hmm. If I'm seeing that right, there's there's kind of a corner there. So if you really want to get it out, I would disengage that those two edges, pull that back, cut the pad out, put a new pad in, put a new piece of pad in, and then clean the carpet from the front and the back, get as much of that sugar out of there as you can. And then I would probably throw it with some pretty heavy O2 just to try to get color um gone just change the color so it's not even there anymore and then dry it as super fast as i could probably with the carpet mm -hmm. still disengaged um and then yeah i would still go back most likely with a little bit of silver solution and, and end cap it just to just to try to keep it from from moving so in. let's talk about the time rate and how you would figure out the cost on this because to me, tonight's show is about added on charges. You know, if you can take care of this type of spot or spill or like the tattoo ink, you're now a specialist. Your average carpet cleaner is going to throw their wand on the carpet, pretend to clean carpet, in and out, one and done. Thomas, you've made your entire career being a specialist. Oh, um, I, I have no problem with Silver Solution as the initial response to this. Mm -hmm. Warm water, not hot warm i don't want to go too hot with these sugars and drive them in and i would apply it agitate it very gently using a handy groom okay so we're specific using a handy groom and then i would use layers of white cotton towels and my tamping brush to remove the gross contamination okay then i would probably if i wasn't going to disengage this i would use a spotting claw and a needle injector, again, using warm water and flushing it. If I can disengage, I'm going to disengage, just like Kevin said. Remove the pad, clean the floor, replace the pad, flush from the backing up. I'm not going to use hot water because I don't want to flush hot water into that latex. That can cause it to delaminate as well. So I'm going to use warm water, and I'm going to put the spotting claw on top and flush it from the back. And I'm not going to use anything with a lot of pressure. I'm going to use a volume of water, not a lot of pressure of water, because the pressure will blow the latex apart a lot more rapidly than just a continuous flow. Yes. And then when I'm Next. done, I would probably treat it with an oxidizer and maybe an anti-resoiling agent. Yeah, Paul, uh, Kevin and I have talked about this quite a bit, and he's a big into flushing things very thoroughly with his magic water. Um, but I'm big into the tamping brush. Well, it's so a that I can, of I can drink a little remove bit the gross, of remove the gross a contamination for first. Is always remove the source of the odor or the contamination. Remove as much source material as you can before you go crazy. So, and yeah, and, and keep in mind that there's times when you want pressure and there's times that you want flow. Right. It's just like That's when right. we when we power wash. Um, there's times when we're surface cleaning we want pressure. When we're rinsing. We want flow. So exactly. It, it's it's not one or the other. Um, so whatever the situation calls for. So again, you could put some really hot, really high pressure water on the backing of that carpet and destroy it. So whatever's right for the moment in, in this situation. Again, if I'm yeah. doing the back, like so, Thomas said, I'm, I'm going flow, not pressure. Absolutely. So, Paul, you had your hand up. Okay, so uh, all the comments were excellent so far. Uh, good, good information to put to, into practice. Why? Thank you very much, Paul. But one of the things when we talk about spot removal, one of the things we don't hear much about, we don't get demonstrated much, is you have wicking when you have a, a, a soil like this. And so one of the key factors is when you get the spot out and the carpet looks beautiful, you're still not done. What you also have to do is either set up a poultice or sometimes we call that diapering so that as the last moisture that's in that textile is going to bring along a little bit of residue. And so if you put a, a diaper or a poultice or a bandage on uh, that surface, then those uh, sugars, those stains, those colors, those odor molecules can actually keep on going and go up into the poultice. Or if you can't do that for whatever reason, oh, and sometimes drying compound carpet cleaning 
is a, oh, a, yeah. a cleaner, is a good poultice, especially yeah, in a four seven yeah. operation. You know, some of you guys do healthcare, or if you do a public place like a, a airport or a bus station, you you can't leave trip hazards, but you can Absolutely. put capture or host or some other product. But the idea is to keep that wicking to go through the textile up into the pole material. Or if you can't do that for whatever reason or don't want to, uh, the other option is to thoroughly dry it. And so sometimes uh, a hair dryer or a air mover is key to spot removal so you can stop and put an end to that wicking by removing the vehicle, which is the water, and evaporating the water out before it has a chance to move that material. So everything we talked about earlier is more important. You got to get rid of the source, but you, perfection is difficult. So that Absolutely. that poultice uh, or super dry uh, is is kind of the last step to stain removal. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. In fact, there's not been anything said on this that I disagree with, so I'm going to make something up. Um, would it be necessary to remove the pad in this situation? If it soaked all the way through to the pad, would it be necessary to replace that pad? Is there any way of cleaning the pad? It depends on the type of pad. I mean, that's the first consideration. The second, is it worth it time and material-wise? You know, it's going to be half inch, three eighths, seven sixteenths pad if you have pad it's probably easier to just double cut the pad. So you cut the affected area and the new piece out to fit exactly by putting the new pad over the top and cutting through both pieces at the same time. So you have an exact fit underneath and you don't have to problem. The problem with it that way is probably faster than trying to flush all that from and guaranteeing you're going to get a hundred percent. Yeah. I definitely don't want that. Those sugars because sugars will grow things. Paul. And, Pad is usually quite easy to clean. Uh, so if you have a synthetic pad, you know, usually that's very cleanable because it's it's similar to synthetic carpet fibers. Or if you have a fiber pad, usually they're 100% synthetic. And even though it's a felt pad, you can still clean. Now, there are some pads that are natural fiber and there are pads that have dye in them. And in the old days, we used to have pads that had so much BHT in them, they would yellow. So there are some exceptions to that. But but typically, you can wash that pad in the sink and take care of it and reinstall it. But you do have to make sure that it's not going to bleed color or be destroyed by the cleaning. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's one of the things. And I want to talk about the charges because tonight's about making extra money. If you are a spotting specialist and you run into this sort of situation, you got to think about what your company needs to make per hour in order to cover this sort of thing. This type of spot spill stain could take you up to an hour. So if you charge, I, I have a flat out spotting policy and I encourage everybody to do it. I charge $150 an hour and I charge in quarter hour increments. If you're not doing that, or you know, you can pick what you need to charge with your company. I don't care if it's $100 an hour, 75, 30, whatever you need to do to make money, but you have to have done the math and know what your company needs to do to make its money during the time and what you need to do to cover your cost. So that's an important thing to understand is that when you're doing this type of spotting, it's going to take extra time you have to be reimbursed for it or the customer will not appreciate it. Because I can tell you right now, a household machine will just make this a mess. Paul. Often, the people that have this bad of a stain and the last two that we looked at, the, the only real option if they don't hire an expert spot technician is replacement. So remember, you're not competing with a coupon cleaner who's going to do it for, you know, fifteen ninety five a room or whatever, you're really competing against the carpet store and the carpet installer. So now all of a sudden, the competitive bid that's going to do what you can provide is a 1000 or $2,000. And a lot of times, even though it's only in one room, 
that room matches other rooms and hallways and entryways and and for them to replace that one room of carpet you know if they like that all flow through look you got to replace multiple carpets so don't cut yourself short and say well it only cost you know fifty dollars to clean this room so that's my ceiling no you're, you're competing against replacement Absolutely. And that, that's the thing that I want everybody to think of while they're watching tonight's episode. Um, for you guys that are watching online, you know, remember to put your comments or questions in the comment section. We'll go ahead and answer those as we go or at the end of the show. And don't forget, we have an important giveaway at the end of the show tonight that I'm going to be doing. So um, let's move on to the next. What would you do? So in this case, this guy has left his cards everywhere. He is working hard to try to grow into the commercial market, and he's kind of stumped. And it looks like he's done everything right. He's talked to the managers, the supervisors, and everything. And Kevin, I know how good you are at getting commercial work. You're one of my local competitors and friends, um, and unless I break out the Subaru manual. Um <laughs> of course, of course, you have a Subaru. Uh, I don't. Do. I don't. We got rid of the Subaru and it's solid guard. But no, you still have the man. a Volvo. I don't. I'd have rather a Volvo he have no a Volvo more. than a Subaru. I'm sorry, the Subaru is, that, is amazing. It matches the, the haircut. Anyways, the, yeah. will you? <laughs> hey, which by the way, Subaru is Japanese. I didn't know that for years. They have a fart I know. Can I, on it? Tim, did it have a fart can on it? Yep. See. Y yeah. It. Yeah, it did. It did. Totally did. It was my son's car. That was my I, excuse. I don't have to say anymore. Aftermarket turbo, big exhaust. Yes. Anyways, Kevin, how are you going to help this guy out? Because I know we're, we're in competition and I'm always bidding on stuff. You're always bidding on stuff. And we're always talking. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't comment so you don't take all my secrets. <laughs> Yeah. Never mind. You're going to pull up in a Subaru and you won't get the job anyway. So <laughs> what I would do, <laughs> and I actually commented on this. So the, the big thing with commercial work, everybody's busy. Okay. Facility managers have not gotten lighter work. Their duties haven't decreased over the last 10 years. They've increased substantially. So where they had assistance or where they had help or someone else, was doing a particular job and it, it it's just gotten dumped on them. So the, the the way to look at it is unless someone is screaming or something is flat out broke, it's not going to get their attention. So a good example of this is building services at the hospital. That's one of the cost centers that we work for. They have so much stuff that goes on. When there's a problem somewhere that's minor, like somebody will, will call about a dinged up wall or, or something that needs to be painted, they, whenever, they can't even deal with it. So what you have to look for is a problem. Search for a problem. A lot of times you'll see it as soon as you walk in the door. And, and for commercial buildings that have customer traffic, and certainly for hospitals and medical centers, clinics, doctor's offices, you will almost always find a problem in the waiting room. There's always a spot on the carpet. There's always something that's sitting there. That's what you have to focus on. You've got to solve that problem because they may have had 10 or 15 people complain about it. We the, the one of the other hospitals that we service, they just had that where they're getting customer complaints about shower floors. So we we came in and we tried to do some fixing and we may have a solution. We may not it just depends on if they're going to want to replace it. But if you can be the answer person, if you can have the answer, you can fix the problem and it doesn't take any time off of them. They will call you every single time and they won't call anybody else. They won't bid work out. They're just going to call you. Can you fix this? That's what we do. We fix problems. That's why I'm here. I need to. And again, they will not call anybody because they don't have time. A lot of the 
and, and this can work in your favor. A lot of facility managers nowadays do not have time to bid their workout. No, they and absolutely you, don't. The, You're hundred percent correct. There's no time. There is literally no time for it. So when they get your email that it isn't going just to spam, no. they read it for one second. And they have to put out the next fire. They've already had three yep. heart attacks happen before their day started at 9 a.m. I mean, I, I think some of my facility managers, they'll deal with 20 issues before they're open. And I try to be gracious enough to send my emails until after they open around their first break around 1130. I found that to be effective to get positive um, communication because before then, before 1130, they put out 150, 200 issues that are like silly issues to you and I. But imagine having um, a patient room that doesn't have the gauze of the doctor once. That's a bigger issue than there being yep. a spot on the carpet. Yep, 100 percent. And and when you look for those problems and you can identify one, you can simply ask the question. Can I solve that for you? Mm -hmm. Won't cost you anything. Obviously, it depends on the job, but most of the work that I've done, um, it, it's came from demos. And I, when I commented on this particular post, we got a ten thousand dollar a month janitorial contract from a single bariatric drink stain because it had been there for three years, and they had tried at least three different companies and seven different tries to get it out, and no one touched it. And I simply asked them. I said. Now, of course, this is when I was running the big janitorial company. I said, if I can get that stain out, will you give us a bid um, presentation for janitorial? And he yeah. said, yeah, absolutely. Came in. I set up the day to come in. I came in at six o'clock in the morning before all the patients got there. 45 minutes, it was gone. We had a yeah, bid walk through. We had a bid presentation at eight o'clock scheduled if I had gotten it out. And sure enough, we had the bid presentation and we got the contract. So be be a problem solver look for something that that they need and then the other thing that you can do is stay in front of them don't spam so, them don't send them an email every day but once a month or twice a month send them a, an email on something else um and not really specials commercial people aren't worried about interested in specials well, that's what i was just about to ask how much concern is there especially within medical buildings is there about pricing? How much is that on their mind? They're, we're talking about the busiest humans on the planet. It depends on the importance of the work. If they have exactly. a surgeon, exactly. If they have a surgeon that's complaining about a floor in the OR, guess how much they worry about money? Zero. Not at all. I know. Not at all. I know. It, and I they're didn't calling MRI. the guy. They're calling the guy right. or they're calling the lady that knows how to fix it and says, "We have a problem. I need you in here today." On my way. Two ounces of Diamond 1000 disinfectant in an MRI room at five hours at 150 an hour in quarter hour increments per technician. They didn't question it. They didn't think about it. They didn't They didn't even glean a question mark. Now, it's not carpet cleaning. But when we're talking about an MRI room, for example, but guess how I got that account? It's through carpet cleaning. And they're Correct. literally like the, the director had a panic look on her face because number one, another thing I have to mention guys and Kevin, you've stressed this upon me many a times. We cannot be misogynistic when we look at people, when we're talking to these women, women and men that are directors, we have to go in and we gotta, we gotta just fix their problems. We Stay just humble. gotta be, Stay as humble as possible and realize yep. there are there are superiors at all times, no matter how much expertise we have. In this case, can you make it not smell like puke? And can you grab something from our SDS catalog we already have? Yep. And so you got to be willing to change whatever thinking you think you know to what the customer needs. Um and, you know, like like you deal with situations where you have to use specific products based on what the hospital guidelines are. Mm -hmm. Yep, they have to be approved. But, yeah, again, there th sometimes there's ways around it. As long as we're not storing it there, there are things that we can bring in if if it's, you know, absolutely necessary. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. we have to make sure that we're we have all of our eggs 
or uh, ducks in a row as far as you know how we're going to use it procedures and the SDS and all that stuff but um again be the problem solver you find a way to make the contact that you have or potentially will have look like a hero if you can make them yeah. look like a hero they don't want to call anybody else because i guarantee that every single facility manager you talk to has had at some point in their career someone that made them look like a zero and they will never call that person again so if you can Absolutely. do the opposite, you're golden and and you will have work for a long time with these guys. Because, again, like we, we said, they literally do not have time to bid this stuff out right now. So they need a good reason to do it. They need a really good reason to switch. And sales is all about reducing risk. So if you can find a way to sell yourself, sell your service, sell your expertise so that they have very little risk in making the switch to you, that's when you will get the get the opportunity and get the sale. If there's more risk, even if they're getting a, a lower quality job, if there's more risk in in trying you out or going with your service, they won't do it. Yeah. And as far as marketing, it really is just about communication. I found doing things like, hey, give us a shot. I'll pay for a pizza party and I'll put it in your name as long as you hand let let me have a shot. I. <laughs> These directors are so scrambling because they have nurses complaining to them. They have wake staff if it's if it's um if it's facilities like outside of like let, let's say it's outside a hospital or outside of medical um, in hospitality. They have staff that's complaining. They have headaches all day every day. The last thing we can be is bring stress to them. So you know now that Kevin and I covered the subject for the last ten minutes, does anybody else have anything they would like to share on this subject? Josh. Uh, Kevin always usually says this too, and I agree with him on it. Give back to your community. Um, and I've got a story this week where I went, and I, I believe there's some correlation to this. I sat down and had breakfast with my daughter, and there was two cops, and uh, they were sitting down eating breakfast. And you know what? We went and paid for the breakfast, and I had my daughter go up and talk to him just so she knows that police officers are people that kids can talk to and ha ask for help. Next thing I went to Publix later on that day and there was a lady there with special needs that was the bagger for Publix. And I saw her go over there and take our stuff so I could tell she was on lunch break. And I just had punching from God to go buy her lunch. And we did. And guys, I'm telling you, there's a correlation between that. The next day, without even calling anybody, I had repeat clients of over fifteen hundred bucks come in. Now I think that there's some is serious, serious correlations right there. Well, Absolutely. that that shows exactly what happens. People talk and and please share your thoughts, Thomas. Okay, one thing and everything they've said is really good. The other thing I want to mention is. You're, you don't want to be on top of them every day like Kevin said, but you want to make your presence known. And when you're doing these commercial establishments, sometimes a bottle of your end cap spotter, a few white cotton towels and a tamping brush are a great way to just go in every two, three, four weeks. Look at the lobby. If there's a spot on that chair, yes, we sell services. Don't get me wrong. But it doesn't always hurt you to do something at no cost. Hey, just stop in. I saw you had a spot on the chair. I'm going to take that out for you, and then I'll be out of your way. Boom. The gatekeepers, the people see you there. Doctor walks through. Whoever walks through sees that you're doing that. You weren't scheduled. You're doing it, you know, at 6 in the morning or a time when they're not busy. You're not impeding the flow and traffic, but you're on top of the facility. Then when you see something, when you're there at 6 in the morning or 8 in the morning getting that spot off the chair, and you see, oh, my goodness, this looks bad. Or I went used the restroom to wash up when I was done, and this looked bad. That's when you call a facilities manager. I was in there doing spotting the other day, and I happened to notice this was an issue. Would you like me to come and correct that? But being there and doing a few little things for free, just checking in and looking at the facility to make sure there's not a problem can be really good because then they don't, they, figure they don't even have to look at it anymore because you're doing it once a month. Absolutely, Thomas. And Robert, please share your thoughts. Oh, there it is. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm sorry I was late. I was actually cleaning a hotel. <laughs> Excellent. Hospitality. Um, 
So uh, reading through his little thing here real quick, I, I'll, I'll say this and, and everything that I've heard so far from everybody has been spot on. Uh, one thing that I live by with commercial work in specific, I'm 95% commercial. I do very little residential in the commercial industry. I have clients that I have been uh, courting, as we'll call it, for four and mm -hmm. a half, five years before they call. Five years. And then they finally call one day out of the blue. We'd like we we we're we're interested in having you come out to to we've got some problem areas, so what I do is I have a a, a rule in mind. I, it's already set up in my system. It's a thirty day thirty day email. Every thirty days, it sends them an email and says, "Hey, Mr. Cermak, this is Robert with REM Cleaning Services. I know we haven't been in contact in a while. Just wanted to reach out and say." hi how are you doing and if you need anything i'm here mm -hmm. very Sounds black terrific. and white simple um and it just keeps you front of mind um if i don't hear from them you know if i don't hear nothing back i'm, I'm not taking that as a no absolutely i'm taking that as a I, I don't have time to deal with you right now there's other things more important that's going on than my need to whatever over here with cleaning so so once a customer rejects you robert do you consider that to be the end of the story or do you keep pursuing no, it no uh, and, until i hear until i hear an act an, an actual no um that we're happy with the guy that we have um and even at that point if even if they say you know we're happy with the cleaner we've had we've had him 10 or 12 years he's been you know their company's been phenomenal Anytime we've needed them, they've always been here. I retort with, well, in the in, in the event that something happens and they're not able to get to you, feel free to call me and I will do my best to be able to get to you. Absolutely. See, that's exactly what we need to say. Um, because I don't want to take any work from other guys. Yeah. I, and Paul's I been buildings. I visit buildings all the time. And right. they, they say they have a cleaner. Every building that you go into, regardless if that building's been around more than six months, they already have a cleaning company. They have somebody they're using. Yeah, whether they're happy with them or not is another thing entirely. And, and in another, yes. in an agreement with that, Thomas, exactly, a lot of these directors and these operations managers and even ownership, they're scared of change. No Absolutely, matter how they are. bad. No matter how bad the guy that they have in there is, they'll tolerate mediocrity rather than go on a search and spend their time to get something better. Absolutely. So I want to, on, on this subject, Paul. You've been raising your hand quite often. I want to hear what Paul has to say. Okay, so uh, I'm reaching way back in history here, but when I used to actually clean carpet for a living, uh, I wanted to get commercial work also. And, you know, it's hard to get it sometimes. And, I, and when I read this post, I'm going, yeah, I've been there. Uh, so what I came up with that worked pretty effectively was a carpet condition report. Now, maybe if I did it again, I would call it a flooring condition report because, you know, of, of diversity. But back when I was doing, I was mainly interested in carpet. And uh, what I do is I go, you know, Go through all the motion, leave your cards off, brochures off, talk to the gatekeeper, all that. But I would offer to do a free carpet condition report. And I would mention that I was a certified carpet inspector that worked for the carpet mills um, inspecting carpets. And I would do, you know, uh, um, and I had a form. I'd show them the form. I'd say, I'll fill this out for you. And it was a one-page form. And then I would go in. And, of course, what I was doing was measuring all the rooms, checking soil conditions uh, so that I could give them a actual quote. And that's really what I was in there for. Uh, but I told them what kind of installation they had, what kind of fiber they had, soil condition, all, all those things. And then the main thing is I would look for problems. And, and here's the one I found on almost every single job. I would go to the doorway seam and I would grab the, the carpet pile and pull up on it. And if you know anything about carpet installation, you set your iron down on your hot melt tape 
Yes. And you move across the doorway or you know arch, and when you get to the other end and you hit the wall, you lift your iron up. That means on both ends, Butterflies. steam, it's not bonded well. And well, so that's what a hot glue gun is for. I had to say that to trigger Thomas. Yeah. That's actually technically correct. Yes. After a butterfly <laughs> steam. You may be laughing, but that's actually. I know it is. I know, but I wanted to hear you say it. All of us that are inspectors or installers know that, you know, you got to put that iron down, let it sit for a second to get it Mm -hmm. slippery. So now you've melted that glue and then you can start to move it. And when you get to the end, you got to stop for a second and let it do its thing and then lift it out. And so I always had a bad seam on every job. And sometimes I, I found other things that were more important. And I would point it out to him because I'd fill the form out. And then I'd want to talk to the owner, manager, decision maker. And I'd say, I got to show you this. Uh, you know, you got a bad seam here. And what I'll do if I clean the carpet, I don't really want to clean a carpet with a bad installation. So I will repair these seams here, here, and here, and there. And we'll do that no charge because we really need to do that to get a good way to clean it without making it worse. And Mm -hmm. I'll include that in your cleaning thing. But the other thing is this can turn out to be a trip hazard. This can turn out to be a a situation where your carpet installation fails and your seam opens up. So, you know, even if you don't hire me, um, you really need to – take care of this problem. Now, there's other problems. If there was more apparent problem, I'd deal with that. Uh, cigarette burns, you know. Oh, um, absolutely. W- whatever it is, loose tack. Loose right, tack, right. Whatever. But the point is, you. And I like this because this is what Kevin was saying. If you go in and you find a problem, you point it out to them, and then you offer to fix it. Now, I wanted the cleaning contract, so I would usually give my carpet repair services a way to get the contract. Cause I'd say, when you hire me to clean, I will do this. While I'm working. So absolutely. just, quickly, I got see, a lot of contracts with that. I absolutely agree with everything everybody said. And I'm going to turn it back into the way of making money and diversifying with this. So once you get super talented at picking up this type of work, Remember, there's always going to be opportunities where the customer will have a need that you see every time. Let's say it's painting. Let's say it's pressure washing. Let's say it's window washing. And you've got to be able to find those opportunities and then seize them and hire that service. Find a service that you can team up with and then take that service and your team. They're like part of your business. So like, let's say you don't do carpet repair like Paul did. Then you find the guy that does and does it really darn good and you hire him as a contractor, take care of it. That way, in the eyes of the customer and the facilities manager and the maintenance manager, they don't have to call anybody else. For example, Kevin, how experienced were you at power washing service gar- of, of power washing huge three, four story parking garages before you did your first one? Uh, before I did my first one? Well, before you've done them. Um, yeah, before I did the one for the hospital. Yeah, exactly. You just saw an opportunity, and how has that paid off? It's uh, about 25K a pop, and probably takes about five days. There you go. And see, guys, Kevin, did you have any of the equipment to do it? Nope. What did you have to spend initially to take the opportunity? About 10 grand. And it was worth it. Mm-hmm. Paid for it on the first job. And see, guys, if you see an opportunity and you're not capitalizing on it, you're being foolish. If they have painting that needs done, they have window washing that needs done, they have everything that needs done. Now you are their favorite human being because Kevin covered it really well. You're the busiest humans on the planet. They don't have time to search for people. They're literally just wanting it covered good. I have a building that's getting painted right now. The people have been there seven days past the date of completion. (laughs) I love that look on Kevin's face because he knows what that means. This is actually a financial building. They they aren't as critical as medical. but Let me guess, they're the contractors you're using your equipment to. 
Oh, they so used our equipment. In fact, Sherry, you know, she's not on the show. She's out cleaning right now. Um, my dear wife um, threatened to murder them. Yeah. It, it, yeah. 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 But she Been didn't there. say murder. They just are scared to death through the look. You've seen the look. You've seen. Yeah. I've seen her give you the look. <laughs> <laughs> she still likes you. She still likes you. Um. So just something to add to that, that power washing deal. So when, yeah. when I just asked the question, okay. So I went to my contact and cause we were doing just for like 40 foot sections outside the entrances. And I just said, Hey, have you ever thought about having the whole thing done? He's like, yeah, but it's been on my list for two years and I haven't yeah. had any time to get to it. Tell me how much it'll cost if you want to do it. Okay. Yeah. It was that simple. It is that simple 90% of the time in medical specifically, but now in everything. Since COVID happened, these managers are at an absolute breaking point. They cannot get the things back up to snuff because they had two years off from reality. So now we're getting back to reality and reality is scary. And they cannot find the people because the people have gotten regular jobs. Guys went out of business. They didn't know how to handle it. So those of us that stayed in business need to capitalize right now. So let's move on to the next segment, Aaron. All right. So in this case, this person thinks that they're cleaning a polyester, but yet there's some obvious issues going on. It's obviously not a polyester fiber um, type. Can you just blow right into that? Um, it is a linen, I would say. Um, it's hard to say without burn test, but I think think it's actually the type of fiber that we're going to be talking about in just a brief bit um, where you can get browning, yellowing, staining issues. The way I would clean this is with a little silver solution and the sponge technique. I cover that in a video. Make us mix up a lather, cover it really thoroughly with the sponge, and then go through and remove it with some microfiber towels. But I'm curious, what do you guys think of this type of surface and how would you take care of these water rings? Paul. Okay, I'll go on this. Uh, it, it, it does appear to be a uh, um, cellulosic type browning or, or, or watermarking. Uh, and typically, you know, there, there's actually three methods that all work to remove this. And so I'll try to be brief. Uh, one is to, to lower the pH. Now, what, mm -hmm. what's causing this is lignin that is part of all plants. So uh, cellulosic materials have cells, but those cell cells are glued to each other, so to speak, by lignin. So lignin gives the plant its strength. It's the hard, solid stuff. So in, in, in mammals, we call that bones, okay? Yes. Or, you know, so we have bones to make us strong and hard and, 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 and powerful. But in plants, it's this lignin, okay? The, the higher the pH, the darker the lignin is, the lower the pH, the lighter it is. So if you treat this with acid, that lignin gets lighter in color to the point where you get down between the pH of two and three, it kind of disappears. So that's method. That's a method. Uh, the other method is to oxidize it. In other words, destroy that color. And so oxidation destroys the, the lignin's color. And so when you buy paper, uh, for example, uh, copier paper, it's white. Now, if you buy uh, um, craft paper, it's, it's, it's the color of lignin. So mm -hmm. you remove that color with oxidation. The third method is reduction. And you can destroy the color by reducing which is the opposite of oxidation by reducing those colors and then they disappear. So um, acid is non-destructive and the redox oxidation reduction is destructive. So you, you gotta be a little careful with how you do it. But knowing that what I would do is I take this piece of fabric and I would put a little bit of acid rinse on it and or a tannin spotter and then i would take another little spot and i would put three percent hydrogen peroxide on it 
And then on the third spot, I would put 1% reducing agent. Absolutely. I would give it about 10 minutes and go look at it. And whichever one worked best, that's what I would do. Now, sometimes all three of them work. Absolutely. So if all three works and you go with hydrogen peroxide, why? Well, hydrogen peroxide is cheap. Hydrogen peroxide also decomposes into water and oxygen. So yes. there's no residue, no soil attraction, no rinsing required. So 3% hydrogen peroxide is the easiest and lowest cost maybe uh, to do. Mm -hmm. Now, when you use hydrogen peroxide, what you want to do is take the darkest areas and get them thoroughly wet. You want to get them damp. And that's the big problem. Most people use hydrogen peroxide. They, they don't put enough on them. So it's got to be 3%, which is weak, but you got to get it wet. And then in the other areas, like this one has a real dark area and then a medium dark area, then hit those medium dark areas second and get it damp again. But then you, you basically feather into the rest of the fabric. And if it's not too big, you just do all the fabric with a light application. And then you take a, a cotton towel or a bonnet um, and you work it into the whole piece. So you kind of uh, feather those sharp edges so that they're not so sharp. Absolutely. So we're getting quite a few comments here, Paul. I got to cover them real quick. Okay. So this um, is Guy. Um, Guy is wondering if LST or Silver Solution both would work incredible in this case. Um, but you would want to test once again. Like Paul said, you know, we, we have that product called Storm and Storm would work incredible for the acidic side. If you need reduction, you could use um, you could use a little bit of the, the Thunder product that we have that would give you a slight portion of reduction be within reasonable levels and then you could use a little bit of um lightning but all this fabric is 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 by looking at it i can't tell i don't can't do a burn test but i have a feeling it's the bad guy type of fabric i have a feeling there's some rayon in this because of the sheen if you look at the angles and the, the edges and stuff i think there's some sheen i would want to be a little gentle on it both those products work incredible on it three percent peroxide once again Guy, no problem Cam Mayville asks if um, he's just letting us know that Paul has um, no clue and he wants us to get another expert. Well, Cam, you're welcome to be on the show every night if you want to. You can be here for every single episode and join us and you can tell Paul that he needs to behave. But I'm not going to tell Paul to behave because he's my friend, Kevin Will. Um, and then I great education, it. Paul. Um, me. But it looks like it was from uh, Guy as well. And then for uh, another conversation from Cam, he says to use so rayon, use an oxidizer as best. I agree. Absolutely. So now we're ready for our next subject, guys. We covered this one pretty darn good. All right. So this is a rough one. Um, Nick kind of rambles on a little bit, but basically he has a stinky basement um, to sum it up. It's a, it's a whole bunch of stink on a whole bunch of stuff. He's wanting to know the proper methodology between the wood and the different surfaces. And I covered this one pretty well in my comment, which is you got to treat everything. You can't leave any surface to question. And I was hoping Thomas would cover this a little bit about the proper methodology of cleaning a contaminated area that's really stinky. Thomas, would you please help us out? Okay, well, what I've had great results with is starting with an acid rinse on concrete and porous materials, using an acid rinse, allowing it to resolubilize, which means I have to give it 20 minutes or so dwell. And I was just uh, demonstrating yesterday, uh, we took salts and we were making them dissolve in water. One quarter teaspoon in cold water took 84 minutes to dissolve with a few drops of an acid rinse from your... Uh, product, by the way, we were able to have it dissolved in about 12 to 15 minutes with no agitation. And see, that's the key because sometimes you can't get to it. If you can get to it, that's fine. But sometimes like when we're trying to get it out of padding, we can't for concrete, spray it down with your acid rinse, 
brush it with a deck brush or something to get some agitation. It'll dissolve much quicker. Rinse it with your turbo. Then I would dry it really well. And then I would go after it with an obliterate. Once I remove yes. the gross contamination, gross mm -hmm. contamination first, that's the rinse with an acid. And uh, that's getting rid of the gross contamination, always the first step. Then I would actually try to use obliterate on it next. And if that didn't solve all the odor, which it probably will not on the porous surfaces, uh, you can recreate and resaturate. Or with the obliterate, you've done both as a second nature cleaning and resaturating. So you could dry it really well before sealing it. There are a number yes. of different uh, sealers you can use to stop any moisture from getting to any alkaline crystals that are left in those porous materials. I've used everything from white and clear pigmented shellac to we did one job not that long ago that was concrete. And uh, we used a product a customer had bought called Crete Seal by Sherwin-Williams. And it did a very good job. I was very happy with the end result when I went back and cleaned her furniture about four months later. Uh, there was no odor whatsoever in her garage. Oh, wow. That, that is so awesome. Thank you so much for telling us the proper methodology for taking care of this, Thomas. I 100% uh, agree with you. 100%. I can't add anything to it. Uh, then we have obliterate liquid coming out, which can be fogged on the surfaces with an LVL fogger. Um, but I'm not going to announce that yet. It's not an announcement officially yet because we haven't got any on hand and I can't advertise it. You just did. I am such an idiot. Speaking of that, I we have that got our, our man that picks on Paul all the time. Cam Mayville is here, and I just love the guy to death. Cam, please share your thoughts. What's going on, guys? You know, hey, I was just sitting back watching the show on Facebook, and, uh, you know, I got to give my brother Paul Lucas a little bit of crap. I mean, I only get to do it on, like, Wednesdays and, you know, like, 9 in the morning when he's just rolling out of bed in the morning when he's having his breakfast. You know, I get to call him up and give him a little crap. But, no, I'm being – He's up by 9? You know, some days he is. It depends on who's making but, his eggs and his but, hash browns, man. You know, But of course, here's the thing, fruit. Cam. I don't feel 9 o'clock is morning. <laughs> I feel that's the beginning of the party. That, that's or the true. Rest, the leftovers from the party the night before. I'm just still partying at nine, man. <laughs> yeah, you're just getting things rocking and rolling, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, being serious, though, Mr. Paul Lucas is uh, definitely one of the greatest out there, and he, he's he's definitely sharp. And uh, so whatever he says, I agree with that. He's all right. I'll tell you he's what, right. man. Thomas freaking nailed that. I mean, and, and he? he nailed it. I think he nailed that in under two minutes. He explained to everybody what you need to do, how you need to do it. That was badass. That was really good. Wasn't that crazy? Like, Thomas is, like, one of the best teachers in our industry. We're going to give him a big head. But the fact is, guys, if you're not going to Captain Carpet um, for your training, you're looking at the wrong trainers. I highly recommend his classes. I've been watching his videos on YouTube. And I will attend one of his classes within the next year without question. Because Captain Carpet is the man in our industry to take care of you guys. I watched him stay up till midnight answering my questions when it comes to anything other than carpet. He is there as a mentor, as a friend, as a caregiver. He's an awesome dude. And he won't chime in right now because he's that good of a guy and he deserves the praise. Same with Paul. Paul deserves praise to him and I can sit and listen to Beatles albums. Oh, while drinking good why, quality why you gotta kill it, man. Why you got to kill it? Oh. <laughs> you know what? I bet I know exactly what happens. You sit and listen to the Beatles in your Subaru. <laughs> and that explains a lot. You know, I replaced my Subaru lot. with a Chevy pickup. So you guys can. Kevin has okay. quickly become my favorite on this show. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> Isn't he awesome? Kevin is I mean, could you pay to have a Kevin around? I mean, when the first well, time I met Kevin, can. he told me Silver you Solution can, was but. crap without ever testing it. He just didn't believe that it was different. He didn't believe it was a different product than what was already out there. And well, that's, then, that's because when you first put it out there, you're like, oh, look at this. It's sweet cinnamon sparkles. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, man. You and everybody else. And then speaking so of then cinnamon the sparkles, I want to thank the people at Truly for supporting my YouTube channel. Um, so anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
shameless plug moment. I couldn't help it. So, guys, I'm hoping Kayam can chime in a little bit on this next subject that we have going um, on how we can make a little bit more money. Uh, Aaron, will you please roll our next photo? Ah. Florisol, can we blow this up a little bit? Now, Florisol is a product that I have been using for years. I bought a five-gallon bucket of the stuff, and I go to my interior decorators, and I talk them into letting me treat the upholstery and the fabrics before it leaves their location. And it has treated me awesome forever, but now they have it for the death fiber. The fiber that makes us want to end our lives. The fiber that makes us want to sit along round and listen to Beatles music. The fiber that will break your hands when serving ice cream. The fabric that makes you wish you had magic water every last time. And the fiber that is absolute crap and can't even be made in the United States because it is just crinkly paper that gets wet and weighs 8 million pounds. Now, I know that's a bit of a sales pitch, guys. But rayon is a problem material. Paul, can you please share with us the benefits of Florisol for rayon? Okay, well, um, a few years ago, and Cam was there, uh, we came out with a rayon rug shampoo because so many of our customers, so many of our cleaners, so many- I'm going to interrupt you. Rayon is viscose, and viscose is rayon. Pretty much, well, right? Well, technically, the Federal Trade Commission recognizes the word rayon as the proper name for this type of fiber uh, back many years ago. And the words um, um, viscose and cuprimonium and uh, lyocell and uh, uh, other names are really different methods of making rayon. So you're getting into mm -hmm. subcategories, but the overall word for all of these subcategories is rayon, according to the federal government, US, United States uh, government. So the proper word is rayon, uh, but viscose is the lowest cost process of manufacturing rayon and is also the most environmentally damaging method of making rayon and cuprimonium was invented to make it less damaging to the fiber and and a uh, lyocell method was invented in the united states to make it non-damaging at all to make rayon fiber so uh if you're environment if you're a tree hugger and you're environmentally conscious uh you should only recommend the uh, Lyocell, which is Tencel is the name, uh, the trade name, but that method of manufacturing does not hurt the environment. Also, uh, that method, uh, Cuprimonium and Lyocell method, removes all the lignin, so your problems with the fibers discoloring are removed with those two methods. So really, that's what you want to clean if you can clean it. But for those other methods, um, like um, uh, the, the other methods that leave the lignin in, and there's a couple of them, but viscose being the, the primary one, leaves a lot of that lignin in there. And then when you wash it, uh, it, it discolors on you, it yellows on you. So the reason we came out with rayon is we already have a good cleaner for it. We have methods for doing it, uh, the procedural methods, and then we were looking at it and saying, well, the problem with rayon is it's still so absorbent. And so when you when you clean it, it it's a sponge because, you know, a, a cellulosic sponge is a rayon sponge. It's the same exact material. And so it's a viscose sponge. So when you get that textile upholstery, carpet, rug, wet, it just drinks up the water and it's so slow to dry that you almost always get yellowing. So we're sitting there trying to think, well, okay, we got a cleaning chemical, we got a cleaning procedure, but we still have this really spongy paper-like material that's very weak. 
weak and low performing. What can we do to fix that? So we came up with uh, Florosol Rayon, which is a very good waterproofing material, very aggressive on the water beating, waterproofing side of the spectrum. So now, if especially if we can get a brand new piece of rayon uh, where a customer buys it, or if we can get to a retailer before they sell it, or an interior decorator before they recommend it, and we can treat that textile before it's exposed uh, to traffic, then we can make that low-performing rayon actually improve it. Now it's not going to be better than everything else. We're not. We're not. We're not trying to say it's magic, but we could get it up to the performance of other fibers, so it per performs good enough to use it. Because rayon's a nightmare. So if we can treat it, we can prevent that yellowing. We can make the stains easier to remove, and we can make the cleaning more responsive. Now, does it make the fiber stronger? Does it make it last longer? No. It's still a paper textile. We can't change that. But that's what people buy. But we can make it perform so that it's more livable. Because if you don't, if you just take regular viscose rayon and put it on somebody's floor, it, it's not going to perform well. And people are going to be very unhappy. Yeah, and I've noticed with my interior decorators, they get quite worked up about it. But I want to ask our present and here rug washing expert, Cam, what do you think of rayon fibers? Well, And how Paul, is this going to help you? Well, Paul made a mistake of something he just said. He said that it won't make it last longer. I disagree with Paul on that. And I know the Paul. I agree. Is, I agree with yeah. you. Uh, I, I, you know, a thousand percent. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my dogs are barking a little bit here. Um, okay. uh, wait, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my, so basically, the fact is, it does make it last longer because it's protecting that fiber so much better than it's ever been. So yes. it's working. It's doing the job, and and people need to understand that. There's a lot of protector. And look, one of the things when this went into testing, and we started really trying to figure out if this was going to be the real deal, we had to look at it and go, okay, is this going to make a difference when we clean? And after cleaning pieces with it over and over and over again, we realized not only is it going to protect the fiber, when we go to clean and we test it, we did you know the same area that protected it, it cleaned up well. Now, was that because of the coating? Was it because, of, I, I don't know the answer to it. But I do know this, it worked, which means in return, it's going to make me more money and my customers can be happier. But when Paul said that, I went, whoa, hold on, buddy. Give yourself some yeah, credit it, because it did make that much of a difference. It's not going to make a difference with sandpaper type of wear, but when the cu customer spills a cup of espresso, we can fix it now. And we couldn't before. Absolutely. Um, Thomas, you have something you'd like to I share? I think because of the way it changes the surface tension and causes beating and everything else, that it will actually make the vacuuming more effective, thereby reducing the wear and abrasion as well, which is going to give you a better appearance during the entire life of that. And it will clean up better because it's going to have less wear and abrasion, less places for those contaminants to get into the pores of the fiber and everything else. So I love Paul, but uh, I agree with Cameron. I think he was wrong. I think it's going to make the carpet last longer. And, and have a better overall appearance for longer as well as the other benefits. I think he was overlooking it. I think he was just being modest. Well, I, I, I think he's being modest and humble. So we guys, we get to see that moment where Paul's being modest <laughs> and, <humble. laughs> yeah, right. and, and self-deprecating. Because if you hang out with Paul, you find out really quick, he's modest, humble, and self-deprecating every once in a while. So tonight you guys got to see it on the show and you got to experience it firsthand. But here's the thing. I went and I sent out an email. We have three interior decorators. That's it. That's all I have. But I live in a community of about 150,000 is about it. If that's if you include South Bend and all the neighboring communities around South Bend. And I sent out an email to my interior decorator saying, hey, on top of our service where we apply our fiber protectant, we're now offering a Pacific fiber protectant for viscose and rayon. And every single one of them responded with yes and please in their statement. These interior decorators 
are feeling like fools, idiots, and mar- morons right now because they're selling people rugs that are viscose, furniture that is rayon, because what's in fashion currently, it's currently very vogue. Viscose fibers are very vogue. I mean, Cameron, how many rugs do you get that are viscose in a week? You know, in a week, I would say we average about 10 of these a week. Um, yeah. When I first started, it was a kind of a lower number. But now, you know, 10, 12, 13. Con- I mean, and, and then not to mention the blends, the tufted blends that are woolen viscose. Those oh. are the too. You know, I mean, we're what seeing about them cotton the viscose. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so this, this is a total potential industry game-changing product. But Paul's going to undersell it. Because he likes the Beatle music and, and jazz bands. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, so th- that's the other point I want to make, especially with the theme of your show being on how to make money. You don't want to sell this as like a Scotch Guard treatment. Yes, exactly. A treatment. This is specific for solving a problem with rayon. And this product is designed specifically for rayon. So what you want to think about, and let's talk about upholstery. You know, I know this is going to freak you people out, but I already have people doing this. You want to look at upholstery cleaning that if you put on regular fiber protector, that you should be charging approximately half of your cleaning rate. So if you go clean an upholstery item for um, $200, then yes. your regular fiber protector should be about a hundred. If you're doing high end work, you know you're doing the upper scale work, not the coupon discounting, you know, work. Absolutely, and if you're at interior decorators, they're high end. But when you go with floral solve rayon, you need to be charging the cost of your cleaning. So if you do an item for two hundred dollars, your fiber protection should be $200 because the value of the protector is as great as the value is of the cleaning. And when you bid new stuff, you really want to look at, well, what would I charge to clean this rug or this carpet or this upholstery? And you, you need to charge that much for the protector. Now you're going to, a lot of people are going to say, well, he's full of BS. He's a salesman, whatever. I have customers already that charge more than that. In fact, uh, I have a customer in Florida and he had a cust- He has a customer, has a home in Florida and um, they use his service. Now he's a franchise, so I can't name the franchise because all kinds of problems will happen. Um, but he's a franchise for fiber protector. And he charges way more than what cleaning costs. So if Joe's carpet and upholstery cleaning came in and they said, well, we're going to charge $200 to clean your upholstery, he would be putting protector on for like four or 500 bucks. I mean, that's just yeah. who he is. And he does it all day long, every day of the week, drives around in his first oh. 80s. Uh, you know, bidding these jobs. Okay. And he's busy. So I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you and just tell people what I'm charging. Okay. If you don't mind, Paul, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. So what yeah, I'm charging what char- is, tell me what you're charging, Tim. I'm going to tell you what I charge Kevin. So you can go beat my price. Go get those interior decorators. Take them all from me. Go ahead. I don't want none of it. Well, go that's right funny. Ahead. Yeah. That's a funny thing. I want nothing to do with any of this. I know you want nothing to do with it. Absolutely. Anyway. I'm sticking to parking garages and <laughs> concrete and I can't screw that up so bad. So, um, so no offense, I'm going but... through these interior decorators and the price list I sent them was the exact same as my cleaning price for a chair. My chairs start at 75. If it's a single visit. That's considered a half an hour of labor, no greater than a half an hour. And I put that on there. I'll be there no longer than a half an hour. And then what I, yeah, you're squeezing my head once again. It's not, it's not shiny enough. You want me to make it shinier for you? There are you more at home now, Cam. Uh, <laughs> need hair get butter. The, get, um, the, get the Subaru manual so back I, out. I'm, char- it's just, I'm it's, charging it's, up. Your forehead's shinier than the Subaru manual. Nothing shinier than a Subaru repair manual, Matt. Um, but anyways, I'm charging 
the exact same price as I am for cleaning for the initial fiber protectant application. So far, they have six rugs lined up. Excellent. Six rugs. And I am charging them per square foot. If I did on-site cleaning, I'm at $250 a square. And they're taking so, it. And they're not even questioning. They're not even no, they questioning won't. the fee. Because you're solving a problem that they know is going to blow up in their face with customers. And it's, it's already caused them public humiliation. Some of these yeah. guys have had Facebook posts. They've had Cam. Okay, well, you know, let me talk before Cam because he'll just mess up the conversation. So let, me, <laughs> so so let me explain that I can phone That's call. That's it. I'm unmuting Cam so he can interrupt you. There I, you go. You're I, unmuted. I've had people buy. I gotten phone calls. People have bought a viscose rayon rug, put it in their house, and within a day have stains that they can't get out in one day. Yes, one day. One day. So there's a problem out there. So Ron, the guy that I was talking about earlier, he called me up one day and he goes, I have a runner because I have a customer here in Florida and they bought a new runner up in so their house in, in Holland, Michigan. And I, they want it protected. Can you find somebody in Western Michigan that will go and not throw me under the bus? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, I don't want somebody going there and charging them a, a dollar a square foot, foot, foot fiber protector on because I'm way yeah. higher than that. I said, Ron, what, what exactly. price would you charge for the runner? He says, I think it was 275 or 375 And And this is just a small little piece, you know, two and a half by seven. I said, okay, I will find a, a contractor that will go in and, ch and charge – $275 to do this little tiny rug. So I called up Nate. I said, you know, here's the job. Here's the place. Here's the phone number. Here's the address. Here's the people. I said, you need to charge $275. So there are people out there every day of the week getting yes. way more than what we charge for cleaning just for putting protector on. And this protector is better than that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it now, sure is, and I'm currently using Florissant. Yes, if he can remember what it was he was going to say. It so almost Cam, makes me want to try doing rayon remember. now. Well, <clears throat> what I wanted to say is I wanted to play a little devil advocate and go back to this. Even though this is extraordinary protecting, and it is, it's going to prove itself. I know it will. I've tested it, been through it. You still got to come back to this. You have to explain expectations to your client and everyone here and everybody watching tonight one of the most important things that you need to remember is setting up a strategic approach to your client that you're going to come back every six months you're going to inspect that rayon that viscose that tenant, whatever the heck it is you're going to inspect it they're going to chart you they're going to pay you a monthly fee but you're going to be kind enough to come out there inspect the rugs inspect this inspect that do the things that need to be done to make sure that your client understands that this still is not bulletproof and that you have to Absolutely. maintain it. You have to take care of it. And if you do those things, that customer will stick with you for a much longer period of time and so, you're in the house on a regular basis. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons. you're a rug washer. I'm not. I'm not a rug washer. I don't want to wash rugs. I'm not, I'm not that dumb. Mm -hmm. I'm not that thick. I'm not going to uh, buy all the equipment. I'm way too smart. I'm going to hire someone like you to do it and let you take the fall. And in fact, part of that email that we sent stated to our decorators, hey, in three years, we're going to pick those rugs up, take them to the Roche plant and have them cleaned. Part of our strategic alliance of businesses, I'm applying the protector. Then those rugs are going straight over to the Roche plant when three years it's already in the bill from the interior decorator. They're getting paid up front for the three-year service with a 30% increase in price in three years. Because when you're remodeling a home and you have millions of dollars in the bank, you're not worried about the millions of dollars it takes to fix, to remodel your home. You're worried about it looking good for 10, 15, 20 years. And so they, that part of that strategic alliance is finding yourself the right rug washer. And they can find out if you want to become a rug washer where can they do that, Cam? 
Well, I mean, are are you talking like them finding the, the proper rug washer and looking and finding? No, how person? can they become one? Because the guys that are watching right now, they all have entrepreneurial seizures, like I do. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, you know what? Absolutely, man. You know what? There's a lot of classes out there, but of course, I'm going to go hint, back. Hint, hint, shameless plug. I know, and I thank you for it because. But you know what, man? We really give a damn about this industry. We really care. I about do too. It. We want, that's exactly why I love to come on here and talk with you guys because we got to make a damn difference. And, and these fibers are out there and how are we going to make it better? Well, we got to show the carpet cleaners who are coming up going, I want to clean rugs. Well, yes. don't let them go out there and get pulled this way or that way when they don't even understand their own goals. Sit, we got to sit down with them. We got to show them what do you really want out of this? If you want to just do a few here and there, we can show you that. But if you want to become a rug expert and do this on a regular basis, well, that's a whole different ball game. But let's sit and talk about it. But we can get them there. We do it all the time. I mean, Paul and I are going on what nine years of teaching classes. We've sold Absolutely. out every single hands on rug class. No other rug cleaner, I think, can say that. We've been able to do it, but it's because we're from that no BS side. You know, we're we're just going to tell you how it is, and we're not going to give you a bunch of smoke. Just, yeah, but I go much further back than that. But but Cam's been doing it for almost nine well. Years. But but Paul, you're 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 extremely old. They had I'm rugs in the they had rugs in the old. in the 1800s. <laughs> well, they had they had leather pelts that they had stretched and scraped. As a matter of fact, I I think there might even be some old you know. Uh, stories about Paul chasing like you know deer through the wood forest or something trying to catch them you know I I, I don't know I've heard about that but yeah yeah well he tanned leather with his teeth that's how he learned how to do it well, I've heard he, that too that is, that's he very peed good. on it and then tanned it with his teeth um, yeah so so anyways guys when is the rug room Paul when is the rug room when can they see you guys and then when is your next class camp Paul, Paul doesn't even know when it is so I'm gonna have to tell you because he's a little please slow, right? I know he forgets already he's nine thousand years old I know the poor guy you know it, hey it's every Wednesday but we've changed some things up we're gonna shorten the show up a little bit because we're so busy and we're so tired lately with the summer being here we're gonna go 7 30 to 8 30. Our class is coming up in October, October 20, 21, 22. I'm hoping to see Thomas there. I know Thomas is like this really rich guy that loves ice cream and all, but you know what? He needs to get off his ass and come to our class and hang out with us, and we'll have soft ice cream for him. We'll have a safe chair for him with straps and all that stuff. We will make sure that Thomas does not injure himself because, Thomas, we are looking out for you. Look, yeah, that's a if, wonderful if offer ever... that I am in September in Vegas, in October in Vegas. And the only way I could do it is if I tied it in maybe with the instructor school or something because uh, I'm not making three flights. You know, I'm not supposed to be flying at all. I'm already doing two air flights in three weeks. All, all I uh, hear is excuses, guys. That's all I hear, Kevin. Well, if I survive oh, I these two flights, well, we hey, might do hey, it. The doctor I, told me I wasn't allowed to do it at all. Let, let me put it this way. I will attend a class, but you better plan on nobody else showing up because that's what happens when I show up. Tim, you you're welcome to show up to our class anytime. Oh, Look, if, dude, if Tim really shows, if that. Tim shows up, can I show up and try you, to show off my newest toys and take? You're going to end up with a story. <laughs> yeah. I'm if not Tim going there, to... Paul. Please share your statement. You're being so polite. And by the way, when Cam says seven thirty, that's Central Time. Yes. It's 8.30 Eastern time, Ooh, 5.30 Mountain time, or, or I mean um, 6.30 Mountain time and 5.30 Pacific Coast. So that that's the time every Wednesday we've been doing. How many years now, Cam? We're, man, we're going on, I think we're over nine years now. And, and, and by the way, I, I do want to mention this, Paul. This Wednesday night, I'm going to show everybody, and I just saved someone tonight. A major, major problem. It, this rug was going south, and I said, hey, let's do this, this, and this, and we saved the rug. I am going to talk about one of those techniques on Wednesday night, and I'm talking. Well, keep it quiet. Oh, keep it, 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 quiet. It, Don't share anymore. You're wanting to share. Stop. It is. I'm not going to say it's it. It's It's huge. It's such a great technique. And, and not yeah. only can it be done on rug cleaning industry, but it also can be done in the carpet world, too, so. I, I always tell guys all the time, if you're a carpet cleaner, you got to check out the rug room. you got to see what these guys are about. If you're not, you're missing out on the greatest show out there. It's what's inspired this show. 
It's what guys need to do. So it's time actually for us to move on to our next thing, which is Josh talking to us about what we should read. Aaron, can we please show that next um, thing about the books? So, Josh, what do you recommend guys reading to improve themselves? All right. First things first, guys. Listen up here. We have got, uh, there's an old saying, leaders are readers. If you want to lead in your industry, if you want to lead in your area, it's time that we need to buckle down, folks, and start reading. Now, this is coming from a guy right here who grew up with a learning disability and had a, or a high school teacher tell him that he was not smart enough to go to college. And you know what I did? I went to college. And I graduated. And I graduated with honors and with a master's degree. So there's no excuse, folks. I don't care if you have a learning disability. I don't care if you like to read. You can go out and listen to audiobooks. My point is, I want to challenge everybody to go out and read and improve your business and become a leader in your industry. And one of the best people, in my opinion, is Zig Ziglar. And um, so what's really cool about Zig Ziglar is you can download his app on your phone. And there's no excuses here, folks. You can listen to his speeches on your phone while you're driving to your job or driving home. And he can give you all, all kinds of great presentations on being positive in business and help you on your sales. This book in particular right here that I'm reading right now is about the goals program. And this book is just deep and very inspiring and very good. The first chapter, he basically tries to sell you on the importance of setting goals as a business owner. And uh, one of the things that I took out of the first chapter was he said, you know that an airplane will actually deteriorate sitting in one spot more than it would be flying in the air. And he said the person, yeah. and the reason why is because it's not doing what it's made to do. And that's basically what this whole book is about. So my recommendation, read Zig Ziglar, download that app guys and get out there. Show us the show us the rest of the title. Show us the whole book so guys can look it up. Yeah, it's Zig Ziglar, the Goals Program. It's very thick. And it's not very big. So you can get it at Barnes and Noble. You can get it online. You can probably get it in audio form. Um, Audible. Yep. Yeah. And um, you can also download, like I said, go to go to the app store, type in Zig Ziglar. There's an app for free. All of his presentations are on there. You can listen to him audit auditorially as well. So that is thank thank you so much for sharing that, Josh. Now no. it's time for us to get to the giveaway. Those of you that watch me on Facebook know that I offered a giveaway in the professors group um, for um, for a bag of lightning. Now lightning is one of our great products. It has a ton of oxygen in it. I know how much some of you cleaners absolutely love that. And I put it in a randomizer and I put a lot of my, I put some of my customers in there too, because, you know, we had probably 50 guys chime in and join and shoot us an email. But this is actually somebody that shot us an email and his, um, it's D DaCosta. He's the winner of this week of, yeah. I'm not going to name his company, but Guy wins this week. He's going to get the, the prize and he's going to get a free bag of lightning and um, that's it as far as the prize giveaway for the week. And, you know, we went. Send him a uh, and... sleeveless edition sticker, buddy. Oh, heck yeah. He's getting some sleeveless. Get... Are you kidding? I'm loading up that box. You think he's just getting a bag of lightning? Hell Are you kidding yeah. me? Is that how I play? It's not how I play. No, you know I'm loading we... the guy up. He's going to no, get some gotta, glittery gotta packets, make sure, all sorts of goodies. Yeah, we got to make sure so it's a good So those of you guys that watch the show, remember we do giveaways randomly as well and to join in and um let me look at the comments we had one question here that i thought we could answer yes um so yes we pass we post this on my youtube channel if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel that's where you need to be in fact the best video experience isn't watching this on facebook with us it's actually watching it on youtube we can see your names we can see your files we can look up and see what comments you used to do. It's a pretty awesome thing. Please join in. And um, it's pretty darn awesome if you can do that. And, um, you know, it, we're not the ones that are awesome. Yee, you're the one that's awesome, by the way, my brother. Um, so 
keep that in mind as you're going through. And um, can we get another about Paul Lucas having no clue? I think I know who that was. So on that note, guys, it's time for us to start wrapping this show up. Absolutely incredible vibes tonight. Remember, get out there and help others. And if you're not helping others, you're doing something wrong. We got to share this knowledge. This industry is not about being selfish. It's about sharing. We wouldn't be cleaners if we weren't willing to help others. Because let's face it, it's humble work. Let's stay humble. Let's stay, stay thoughtful. And let's think it through. And on that note, we're going to take care. See you guys later.